As a result of the rapid advancement of artificial intelligent models, the line between reality and fiction is blurring just as fast. And nowhere is this more evident than the advent of AI-generated deep fakes. These highly realistic AI-manipulated songs, images, and videos can be nearly impossible for the average person to distinguish between real and generated content. And the first people that we're seeing that are really starting to exploit deepfakes, instead of being punished for their work, are actually being rewarded for what sociologists are now calling the deepfake liar's dividend. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some examples of the deepfake liar's dividend in action, and I'm gonna explain the concept and how it generally works so that you don't fall victim. I'm also going to explore the societal impact of this new phenomenon and what it might mean if the liar's dividend keeps benefiting the nefarious deepfake actors over and over and over again. In simple terms, the deepfake liar's dividend is the additional benefit that a wrongdoer derives from creating a deepfake. Because regardless of the damage that the actual image, song, or video does, the dividend is the extra attention that they get because people have to debate whether or not it's real in the first place. So imagine a nefarious actor makes a deep fake image of a celebrity and just not a huge problem, but in an unflattering pose, maybe eating some slightly rotten food. Now that alone could certainly do some damage to the celebrity's reputation. And the deep fake liar's dividend is called a dividend because by lying about this celebrity, the extra attention that's given to it as people debate if it's real or not is extra attention that that bad person can use. And it comes for free with the inherent mystery of whether or not this is real. So if you imagine this fictional image being posted to social media, in the comment section below, there could be a huge argument that develops about whether or not this is just real or fake. Different people trying to win their argument would call attention to, oh, that celebrity would never eat that kind of food or whatever. Other people who dislike the celebrity would be like, that's exactly how I imagined him. I'm sure this is real, blah, blah, blah. And the result is not going to be consensus. It's going to be more division. And both parties, either side, they'll burn the image into their mind more either defending or arguing against it, which means the fake image will have more of an impact than it even would have if it was real and not a deep fake. And I'll multiply that by every video clip, every photograph, every song, and the deepfake liar's dividend all of a sudden looks like it's gonna pay out some pretty extreme dividends. And it just gives liars an edge when it comes to attention. It's a dividend that they receive in a world where truth becomes more challenging. And then when you think about multiple actors doing this constantly and different news organizations and blogs sort of figuring out that they can harness this, it leads me to believe that there's just an endless cycle of doubt coming in our future. The real concern is only partially if we're gonna be convinced of these fake images and videos. The other half is, are we going to be endlessly debating the authenticity on all this stuff? With every contentious piece of content that emerges, experts are going to weigh in, new AI detection tools will be detected, people will run the images through those and then report back. And what I feel like might happen in the long run is that we'll eventually stop trusting everything. And then we'll probably just go back to general heuristics, tuition or gut feeling, or just wanting somebody to be a good person and always saying like, I feel like they're a good person. I can't trust anything. I'll just assume that everything good is real and everything bad is fake or exactly vice versa. I hate that person and then just reverse everything. And if you imagine that world, that sounds terrible for all of us but it sounds great for every social media company. Because as long as social media platforms get to be the place where the battleground is, they get more attention, they get more time on platform, they get more chances to show you advertisements, and they give you more incentive to pay like $10 a month for a blue check mark so your opinion can be elevated in the conversation. Now let me direct your attention towards this really interesting article that was written by Jason Kolipper. It's called The Spectre of AI Generated Leaked Songs and It's Tearing the Harry Styles Fandom Apart. And I feel like this is such a good illustration of what everything is about to become. Basically, there's these really shady communities, these Discord servers, where in the past, people who would steal leaked music before it was released would come to the Discord server, ask for money from people, and when they crowdfunded it enough, they would release it early and illegally. But as you might have even seen on this channel, the deepfake audio, the music, is really getting pretty realistic. And it's no simple task anymore to figure out if that's just the sound of Eminem's voice deepfaked onto a fake Eminem song, or if it's actually some that's about to drop and in the recent weeks dozens of 
unreleased Harry Styles songs have started showing up on these Discord servers. And it's causing a huge rift in the Harry Styles and One Direction fandom. These are super fans, they wanna know if it's real, and they're debating vehemently whether or not it is. But along the way, many of these songs, real or not, unsure, are being sold to the fans for hundreds of dollars. And once these fans bought the song with so much money on the line and ownership in the product, they really wanna find out if what they were sold was genuine or not. So they're starting to scrutinize every detail about the lyrics and the way the song sounds. They're cross-referencing copyright databases. They're consulting AI analysis companies. And of course, they're just as divided as they started. They're just more like locked in and convinced of their positions and arguing, wasting their time. And that's why the people who are creating the deep fake music in the first place are getting their liars dividend. And noticing all this confusion, some of the more nefarious sellers are actually throwing out some real ones once in a while, some deep fakes at other times, but then they try to use the same validation methods or history to prove that they're real. Like one anonymous scammer sold an AI produced fake ocean leak and it made thousands of dollars before he and the money vanished. Fans that are desperate to hear the newest song are probably just gonna be more susceptible. They'll probably talk themselves into it. Like I know there's a chance it's a deep fake, but it sounds pretty real to me. And I'd love to be the first to hear it. Stuff. You're convincing yourself in your brain what to believe, not actually looking at facts. Because it's a different world now and we don't have the tools to actually determine what the facts are anymore. And now if you start thinking, oh, I wanna put something out in the world to get attention and I know I can probably get away with it because I'll just claim that it's a deep fake and then everyone will debate it and the people who like me will just like lock into their sides, it starts becoming a tool of, of oppression. Will we ever have another Nixon who actually gets caught doing something illegal or will they just claim like could be a deep fake and then and all the news outlets and all the social media networks will just erupt, all making money, debating it until the end of time. In a world where seeing is no longer believing, the foundations of journalism, justice systems, and even some interpersonal relationships get shaken. For the justice system, a lot of times the evidence presented in court is photographs or recordings. Imagine showing up with actual recordings and photographs and having the defense just say, oh no, those could be deep faked, and they just go on this tangent about how good deep fakes are. You're never gonna convince a jury that there's without a shadow of a doubt truth in that evidence. And if you're a journalist, you're not sure if you can completely rely on sources like that. Or if you're kind of thinking about a narrative and you start looking for evidence, you'll probably find the kind of evidence because deep fakes are in so many places and debates are splitting everything in half for whatever you want. You put the story together in whatever way feels right. And one of the big revelations I have, I actually downgraded the risk of cybersecurity and stealing people's information and like blackmailing them and exposing them because I'm starting to imagine how much easier it is for somebody who doesn't like you to just fake your and just fake your story. Why like why steal it and expose it when you can just fake something probably 10 times worse than what you could steal. It's actually easier and more incriminating to just generate fake deep fakes about someone, get the debate, get the liar's dividend than it is to actually expose someone for a really bad fact that's the truth. Is there a way forward? Well, let's talk about what we can do to minimize this kind of damage. Countering the deep fake liar's dividend is no easy task, but we could probably mitigate some of the damage if we take a multi-angle strategy at it. First, I would say education. It's a little bit of a double-edged sword, but if you actually put the word out there that these kind of tools are possible and show examples, kind of like I'm doing with this video, I think that at least people can start to be aware and question some of it. Knowing what's possible is the first step towards being vigilant, but the reason I call it a double-edged sword is because also knowing about it does mean that you're going to know that the actual result is not something you can come to. It's, it's gonna be divided and we might not have true evidence either way for a lot of stuff. At least you could maybe hold both sides of the argument in your head instead of truly believing that one is right and one is wrong. Now the second would be utilizing technology in some way. It's a little bit of a chicken or egg game where deep fakes make images and other AIs can try to detect them, but it doesn't feel like it's truly gonna balance out in my opinion. It doesn't look like we're anywhere near having the kind of tool, for example, that could actually tell us if text was generated from chat GPT. So I don't know if we'll have reliable tools that we can just point at an image or drag and drop it into some program and then with true accuracy say, hey, this is real or this is fake, just without some kind of watermark or something being embedded in it. Another role for technology might be using blockchain. One of the best ways to think about if something is real is can you actually follow its long history back? because if you generate a one-off image and you can clearly see that there's no other evidence that that person was in that location or something like that because you have blockchain evidence of where they've been located, then that would give you some ways to kind of fact check this stuff. The third would 
just be policy and regulation. Governments, institutions, companies, they need to create essentially safe spaces for real content. Really ratchet up the punishments for people who get caught doing this purposely. If there is a liar's dividend, then you at least want the risk of somebody being caught doing this to be way bigger than the benefits that they get when they do it. Penalties, precedents, and maybe even jail time. So now you can go out there and scrutinize that subscribe button.